Hey y'all, I'm John Cates and we're going to do some old school computer witchcraft today, casting a uh, plus 10 uh, bit crush spell, a uh, spell to bit crush um, all kinds of materials, but in this case uh, the specific spell is going to be to bit crush um, video files to give them that old school new media feel of a highly dithered, high contrast, um, black and white um, animated GIF feel for um, video files. So in order to do that, um, I'm going to walk through the steps that are um, involved. I'm going to start with a video file that um, has recognizable colors, a uh, color space that's naturalistic, um, that looks um, just, you know, normal. Uh, so this is video of a recent performance uh, installation um, by myself, uh, John Cates and Jeff Kolar at the Museum of Contemporary Art in Chicago. It's a transcoding process, a process by which you transcode multiple times to pick up uh, different kinds of uh, glitches and noise and artifacts, but also to do this high contrast um, uh, black and white uh, dither type effect. Um, you can do this directly, black and white dithering is going to be produced using the animation codec, but uh, we're not going to do that. We're going to keep it at millions of colors plus. Um, but what I am going to do is go back to these options here, uh, look at the filters, and underneath um, the special effects we have a color tint, um, uh, and under the color tint we have a tint type um, of black and white, but we're going to actually choose other, which still defaults to uh, black and white. And then I'm going to manipulate these values um, in order to get a nice high contrast, uh, kind of high con pop uh, of the black and white values. Then I'm going to export that using the animation codec. Uh, I've created a new file here now numbered sequentially. Take a look at this one again. Um, this is from this performance of myself and Jeff Kolar at the Muse Museum of Contemporary Art here in Chicago. So you want to scrub through your video files. You want to get to a frame that is very easily recognizable that you're going to be able to um, work from because you have to be able to um, see pretty clearly what it is that you're manipulating in terms of these um, values. So now again export, not export for web but just straight up export and you're going to look to land that on the desktop. Uh, you're going to look to number that sequentially uh, to keep track of your process here. So again, movie to QuickTime movie is your export option. There are multiple options, but movie to QuickTime movie. Then in video settings and the codec, the compression type is animation. You're going to leave that at millions of colors plus. Again, you're going to go to that special effects, um, color tints, tint type, and other options. It's going to be other. Uh, then you're going to manipulate the brightness and contrast. Um, again, uh, you need to manipulate the brightness and contrast repeatedly in order to produce this effect. Also, this repeated transcoding um, is what produces some of the noise and glitch artifacts that um, are going to be associated with um, casting this uh, spell, this form of computer witchcraft. You're going to export that. Um, so now I have uh, this export coming out, um, and to open that, now I've saved it, it's opened that up, That's this is the uh, next generation, uh, I'm going to look through this one, um, again I, I'm scrubbing through this, you can see this um, incremental uh, change is occurring, so basically one step uh, further in the process now um, got more pop got more uh, high con uh, again export same steps here you know just a lot of repetition um, export you want to number that sequentially the exported file you're going to save that drop it on the desktop or wherever you're going to put it um, you know settings at this point you should be getting used to these um, again this is the uh, special effects the tint type uh, is going to be other, you're going to manipulate the brightness and contrast. You know, sometimes you want to be bringing the um, brightness down. Uh, initially, you want to be bringing the brightness up, then you probably bring it down. Contrast, you want to keep jammed up uh, at the top of the value scale the whole time. You know, be pushing that threshold. So now we're um, at our next step in the process. You can see that I'm already picking up um, some artifacts, and there's a kind of um, you know, an intensity of these edges now. Got a, got a lot of dropout of the um, D 
details in a lot of areas, but a lot just like a lot stronger, brighter contrast. Repeat these steps again, transcoding. Um, we're coming out, we're exporting out movie to QuickTime movie, uh, numbering sequentially, so we're keeping track of the process, checking the options, the movie settings. Um, settings are the same, but the filters are the ones we're manipulating uh, over and over again, same steps, same process. Uh, the filters, special effects, tint, uh, color tint, tint type, and other options, other manipulating that brightness. Um, but now we're actually also going to do another step, go to that um, compression type animation and choose the black and white compressor. And that's actually now the step, because I was happy with that, the level of contrast. So now this is actually the step where on the output uh, I've chosen the um, black and white under the animation codec and now uh, voila we have the uh, old school uh, new media uh, dithering that people associate with an animated gif but in this case this is not an animated gif this is a straight up uh, video file so we've got all the benefits of a big a uh, big video file and then we'll get this beautiful kind of glitchy uh, breakdown over there with those values that those white values you probably uh, caught that uh, in that that right edge corner there um, and so we have this uh, dither pattern that people associate with um, animated uh, gifs but again this is a video file so I'm gonna export that into a more um, appropriate um, codec um, not really gonna manipulate these anymore so set that back down to none uh, go to settings and now this codec that I'm going to choose is Apple ProRes 422 so this is very standard um, high resolution or standard you know basically at this point HD has become like a standard so uh, it's a standard high definition um, file format um, in terms of the compression again numbering that sequentially so this is up to um, six steps because um, I started numbering at zero because computers and now this is a um, 422 uh, compressed file so this is a real standard hopefully stable um, file which I should basically be able to do whatever I want with and be able to take it into whatever um, applications or programs I want to go ahead and continue this process with so you can see that the finder is going to be able to play this file back um, by itself because again it's relying on QuickTime but you can also see if I choose open with I've got the um, you know full set suite of um, options here I'm probably gonna just go ahead and open that up with um, Adobe Premiere in general to do some um, edits some more edits this is how I prepare a lot of uh, materials but here it is opened up in the new version of QuickTime so you can see it's QuickTime agnostic and it plays back nice and stable nice and solid uh, in um, QuickTime, the new version, and you, we retained these um, artifacts, these this kind of noisy, glitchy, uh, and obviously the dithering is there because that was the whole point of this process.